Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be starting a brand new series where I take a look through my vintage Star Wars collection and uh, I see exactly what figures perhaps might need upgrading and make sure they've all got the correct weapons and things like that. So I've had these out on display for a long, long time basically decades in fact since the, the 90s and in that time sometimes wherever they've been located in their display case some of the figures have got a bit sun bleached and um, I'd like to go through and sort of maybe make a little note of exactly what figures have aged which ones perhaps could do with a little upgrade um, I'm not fussed about collecting all the different variations I'm really really not at this stage but I would like the figures that I've got to be as good as possible so that's going to be the subject of today's video and as you can see here the original 12 I've got on one of the uh, the early display stands from back in the day. Um, and I think they look fantastic. And I've always got these out on display. However, the rest of my collection is just sat in a tub in bags, unsorted. So we will be looking at the first 12 in a bit more detail. And then as we work our way through this series of videos, we'll go through the entire the rest of my entire vintage collection and we'll get them uh, popped into the cabinet as we go along. So anyway, without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so here is the uh, the original released 12 figures on the uh, on this display stand. So you might remember this came out in 1978. And uh, this particular display stand actually got me into a bit of trouble with one of the bigger Star Wars Facebook groups, the Echo Base group based in the UK. So I've been a member of that group since it was about... I don't know, 800 members or something like that. And I've been putting up um, posts on my Star Wars unboxing videos as I was discovering the collection. And um, I put a video out where I was just looking for a way to basically display my original 12 figures, not in a display case, just these ones that you see in front of you. So I picked up one of these original display stands. Really, really uh, uh, difficult to get hold of nowadays, but it was in a hammered old state. It had no backdrop and the sticker on the front was really hammered. So <laughs> without really thinking, I suppose, I just went online um, to eBay and I just bought a brand new sticker sheet from, I think it was from Australia. And there was multiple people doing different sorts of backdrops, but I quite liked the uh, Tatooine one. But unfortunately that sort of broke the rules, even though I didn't sort of, um, post it or explain what I'd done on the Echo Base's site um, because I'd basically gone online and put a video out because of that I was banned literally removed from the site after all those years um, I was I have to admit a bit annoyed by that because, because and also surprised at something so you know I'm not trying to mislead anyone it's my figures I'm displaying them how I like to display them and well that was that and you know I spoke to a few other collectors about it and Dave uh, Toy Polloi said look if you've been banned by um, if you've been kicked out of Echo Base then you wear it as a badge of pride <laughs> it's like you know it's like you put it on your on your shoulder as, as like a medal because uh, you've, you've hit the spot there. I mean, and it's not just me, it's many, many YouTubers seem to have been affected by Echo Base. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's jealousy um, that, you know, we've got a massive audience who like our Star Wars content or what really. I mean, I honestly don't understand it, but as I said, David Toy Polloi and Tonya Analog Toys, Retro Blasting, dozens of channels have been like blacklisted so I mean you can easily get on I mean if I wanted to I could go on Echo Base under all manner of multitude of different identities but so what if they don't want me there that's absolutely fine with me but I did think it was incredibly petty but hey ho that's the way of the world um, but that's the little story behind this uh, this display stand. I think it looks fantastic. My figures I'm sorry guys but I'm going to display them exactly how I want to and you can't tell me one way or the other. So let's get on with the rest of this video then. So I use um, as a reference, I'll just show you this. Oh, it's a little bit out of shot, but you can do this yourself. There's a great little website called Jedi Temple. And uh, they've got each, you know, we've got it on my Chromebook here. And they have each, uh, each figure. And you can have a real good look and see exactly how, what should be. So if we chose Darth Vader for, or the Death Squad Commander, There'd be a nice little picture to show you exactly um, what sort of weapons and things like that you might need for it. So I've got that off to the side so that I've got a little reference 
um, to see what a mint one looks like, but also um, if there are any particular um, weapons or anything that I might be missing. Um, also what colour they are, things like that. So we'll start off with uh, the original little R2-D2. Let's get this one in the middle here and I'll try and get them up close. So what I'm looking for in this video is like on this one, for example, I want to see it's not brilliant white, but it is at least it's white enough. It doesn't appear to have faded. Um, I believe my R5 D4 has faded. Now, does it click? Yes. So it still clicks and the labels, I don't think, are too bad at all on that one. So I'd say R2-D2, absolutely fine. Next, we've got Ben Kenobi. Now, I've got two versions of this one. Now, some of these you'll see on the base there. They're stuck on with um, original Death Star bases from back in the day. So let's have a look at uh, Ben Kenobi over here. And what I'll do, I'll um, potentially, I'll pop these little pictures up but I would suggest you just go to Jedi Temple and you can have a look at them yourself. I don't want to steal their thunder or anything. So I've got two versions. One's got white hair, which is the one that's on Jedi Temple. And then I've got a gray hair one, but I believe there's a third one as well. Um, now, these aren't too bad, but what I'm going to do as we go through these, I'm just going to um, give them a little bit of a dust off. These ones here, I think are gonna be absolutely fine because they've been under glass anyway, and they've been sort of protected or under perspex, I should say, not glass. So these have been protected anyway. Not so the rest of my figures, which are in our rule. They definitely are dusty and dirty. So let's look at this one first of all then. So nice tight limbs there. And um, no sort of wear on the, on the hands there. Be honest, that's uh, pretty pretty pleased with that one. White haired version. That's pretty much the same, isn't it? So it's a nice nice example of uh, of the bends. So I think neither of those need any sort of attention. And obviously, I'm not looking to spend money, but. Potentially, you know, there's going to be some of these that are going to need um, a bit of uh, going over. So the next one we got is Chewbacca. We'll do these sort of semi-alphabetically, I guess. There we are. So once again, I'm looking for stiffness of the arms. And that one's definitely got stiff arms. And I know that, that is Chewbacca's bowcaster. I mean, really absolutely stiff and immaculate. That. So I can't complain with that one at all. That looks nice and I mean, that is perfect, in my opinion. I don't think there's any, maybe a tiny little bit of wear around his bag there. Usually it's across the middle there that you see a bit of wear. But I say Chewie was okay. Darth Vader next. And, um, this Darth should be absolutely fine because I believe it was one that was taken out of a clipper mailbox, mailer box, which um, when I was a retailer, uh, we had a whole load of these clipper Darth Vader's come in. We had about a hundred and I think it's come from there. I mean, the arm is fairly loose, but the figure itself still, still feels, you know, pretty stiff and mint. So that's all right. Next, we've got the, the Death Squad Commander. Now, I've got a couple of this one simply because I just love the figure, not for any other reason. Now, this one comes with the, um, the, the classic Stormtrooper blaster. Now, it's interesting because one of mine has got like a bluey blaster and the other one's got a black blaster. So I, I don't know which one it should come with. Maybe it came with both. So let's have a look at the Death Squad Commander on my... Um, on Jedi Temple and it's clearly got a black blaster, not a blue one. So potentially then, this blue one here, which I'm, I'm certain all my weapons are originals, um, that needs to be swapped out for a, a black one, which is uh, 
one of them. Actual figure wise, I suppose that it will get damaged along his little emblem there on the chest. Limbs don't feel too bad on that one. Yeah, he's all right. Got the eyebrows in. Ever so slightly different sort of eyes and eyebrows on that one. Different paint jobs, you know? The belts seem okay. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with both of those, to be honest. Okay, so here's the large head hand, first of all. Now, this one just feels like a little bit sort of waxy, but I always remember the original hand was a tough one to find in nice condition. But there's the large head hand with a black hand solo gun. And I've got the small hand over here. And he has got like a light blue version of the gun. Now this one has got a tiny, you can probably see a tiny little nick on the top of his hair there. So I will make a note of that, but to be honest, it's not really a major defect, is it? I mean, it is, it is a defect, don't get me wrong. But the rest of it, like he's got nice stiff arms and that. The legs are pretty stiff. I would get these come in the shop and they would just be like rag dolls almost, you know? What I'm not sure about is the uh, the colour of the gun. So if I look at Han Solo here on uh, Jedi Temple, see their gun is black for this particular figure, which would be this, this colour. Whereas the other one I've got is a blue. So I've got a black and a blue, a bit like the Death Squad Commander. So I'm going to need to check that I haven't got a black one on another Han Solo figure because they did. He had the same gun, didn't he, as we were going through. Now we got two Jawas. So I got my plastic cape and I got my cloth cape Jawa. So if we look at my plastic cape one, so I've had um, over the years, I must have had about four through my hands. We had at least two come in the shop which were um, just original owner ones. And I knew they were definitely genuine because the people didn't actually know about the later cloth cape jar. This was just the jar that was in their collection. Um, these aren't bad. It does appear as if it's got some dust in the legs, which is why I'm just doing this with the uh, toothbrush. Back in the day when we sold the figures as new ones will come in i would always just give them a bit of a bath in soapy water um because it would clean them all up then and, and rub them with a toothbrush and that was back in the in the 90s but um this is a genuine one um it is my original one because when i first um started buying star wars this was the only jawa you could get and that was right back in 1978 and this was this was the only one i had for many years until I got the cloth cape one later on. I always thought he was bad value for money because he was so short. You didn't get a lot of figure for your money. <laughs> but he is an original one. Um, I've done all the tests on him. You know, you can sort of, you rub, you rub the, uh, the cape and it makes a little bit of a sound, like a scraping sound. I've done all that. Um, the only thing I've not really done is get the, uh, get it graded, but um, I suppose it's something to do eventually. I'm going to have to do um, get some of these graded, but at the moment I don't really see the point. I'm not looking to sell it or anything. I just want them out on display more than anything. Wish he'd hold his gun, which is what we find with a few of these, don't we? They just don't hold their weapons very well. But hey, but he's all right. I'm not looking to do any improvements on that one. My cloth cape one, well, there's a few variations of that, isn't there? But I do know that this one, if you have a look, it's the hands. You see the hands have got some wear. He actually seems a little bit loose, loose armed as well. Underneath, he's all right, yes. It's those hands that are gonna be, that let him down really. So this one is gonna go on the wants list as one to replace the overall figure. I've got the gun, I've got the cape. It's just going to be the figure itself because 
the hands there are a bit worn, sadly. But not the end of the world. So next we've got the original Luke, Luke Skywalker, or Luke Farm Boy, as we call him. So, as you can see here, well, I don't know if you can, I hope you can see, the center bit of Luke here is a little bit yellowed. Not massively, but a little bit yellowed. The rest of him seems pretty nice. But if you compare it to the back, you could say that that's got some sun damage. See the different colors? That's been exposed to the sun and has caused it to uh, yellow up a little bit. Whereas the back hasn't been exposed because the figure's been out like that and it hasn't exposed it. Now, this is an expensive old figure and I still think it's a real beauty, don't get me wrong. It just, once again, it's a, light, a bit like the um, Death Squad Commander. It just sort of feels a little bit waxy, a little bit dirty, and I'm super sort of tempted to, um, to give these a bit of a wash just to uh, clean them up a little bit. Um, I'm not really sure if I want to, because they were all really clean when they went into the cabinet um, years ago. It's just like a basic sort of layer of dust. These aren't too bad, but I think when we get to the other ones, which we'll look at in a minute, um, we're going to have a real job on our hands, because I think those figures might just need washing out right. I don't know until we really get it stuck in. But apart from that, that's a beauty, to be honest. And I think it's going to be... This has got the head on this one's a little bit looser. But apart from that, stiff arms again. Similar sort of thing, it's like the middle torso is aged a little bit. And uh, I guess it's just something that you find happens on, um, on certain figures. Looking at the different manufacturer's marks, and they are different. So I'll make a note on these to say that the torso is, is yellowed slightly, but it's not going to be something that I'm going to, I think I have to get rid of that now. I just don't want it. It's almost going to be like um, small head hands, a little bit of hair lost there. I'm happy to live with it, to be honest. I'm not, it's not the end of the world. Um, you can go a bit into too much detail here and I'm not looking for perfection because else I'd be out there buying graded, wouldn't I? Um, I'm just looking for half decent. So, Princess Leia. Now, let me just check. I'm checking Jedi Temple again here and on the left. And yeah, it's a nice, nice black gun, which is what this one's got. Now I've had a few of these through my hands and this is a really, really tough figure to get. Usually her eyebrows are like worn off if the figure's been played with. But as you can see, there's almost like, almost like the molding marks on her hands. She's hardly had anywhere at all. Maybe a tiny bit of fading to the middle torso again. Apart from that, it's a really, really nice example of that. I guess quite difficult figure to get this one nowadays. Now we've got the, the Sam people. Now I know there's a couple of variations, but I'm not too fussed about them. I'm just happy to have the original one. And he's uh, got his gaffy stick there. That all seems absolutely fine. Um, the limbs are fairly, oh, they're actually quite loose. His legs are quite loose, but the, the arms are quite stiff. So that's all right. Um, no obvious signs of sort of fading really on that one. 
I'd be quite happy with that. So that's absolutely fine. Nothing to worry about on that one. Um, C-3PO, this is a figure that's tricky to find. And once again, we get them come into the shop and they'd just be, all the limbs would be loose. If you feel this, look at that, look how tight the limbs are on that C-3PO. You could almost say he was as close to perfection as you're going to get for an ungraded loose figure, I guess, that one. And that's the way you really want them. Absolutely fantastic, that. A beauty. Absolute beauty. Nothing wrong with that at all. And the last one is the, the Stormtrooper. So I used to have armies of these. I'm sure every Star Wars fan did. Now, this was a lovely crisp white one. And once again, in the years and years that it's been on display, the middle torso has aged um, and gone a little bit yellow. And it's not on the back. It's just where it's been exposed to the light on the front. Um, the limbs are okay. Um, I may still have a couple of Stormtroopers with my patrol back, possibly in the box with a patrol back, maybe. Um, I'd have to go and check. And if, if I have, there'll be nice ones. But if not, I think it shouldn't be the end of the world to find a nice mint Stormtrooper without a yellow, a yellow torso there so that I can uh, replace it. Because obviously I'll just replace it once I do find a, a better one and I'll put my old one back on sale. So it's not exactly going to cost me a lot of money, but it's something that I would like to do as a, an upgrading exercise. So that's the original 12 back on display in their slightly controversial display stand. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I do understand where Echo Base are coming from. It's just um, I did feel a little hurt at the time considering um, this is the only sort of repro or reproduction piece that I've got in my collection. Um, but hey ho, it is what it is. So yeah, on the whole, these weren't actually too bad. And um, although I'll make a note about the, the two Lukes there and the Stormtrooper with the uh, sort of the more faded torso middle bits and that Jawa there, definitely going to need a new Jawa because the hands are pretty gone on that one. The rest of them I'm more than happy with, to be honest. So uh, quite encouraged by that. So I'm going to stick that one back into its GW acrylic case and then I'll just show you as a teaser what we've got coming up next time. Okay, so I've got my original 12 back in their GW acrylic cases. And this basically, what you see here, this is what we've got coming up. So what happened was where um, at the start of this year, or sorry, the start of last year, we had our kitchen done. So I knew it was going to be a massive, dusty old experience. So what I did, I took my display case down and I took all the, uh, all the figures that were in it out. So if we just take this box, which, this bag, which is on the, the top here, this has got, as you can see, a bag of vintage Star Wars figures. Now, all of these are going to need going through literally bit by bit. Check that they've got the correct weapons with them. I'm going to make a note of any that need upgrading, similar to what we've just done there. And uh, I'll work on trying to improve my collection going forward. Now, this is going to be quite a time consuming bit. So we've done the first 12. I'll do the next little video. I'll try and pull out sort of the tail end of the Star Wars figures. And then we'll do uh, Empire Wave 1, Wave 2, Jedi Wave 1, Wave 2, and then uh, Power of the Force at the end. Um, and uh, as we go along, I can now, um, as I edit these videos, I'm going to be starting to make my own little list and I can start keeping my eyes peeled online for um, particular figures as they come up for sale. So there you go. I've got quite a job ahead of me now. Um, I do hope you uh, come along for the ride and I hope you are pleased to see some brand new Star Wars content on the channel because I know a lot of you have been uh, craving some of that. So if you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing if you've not already for regular vintage Star Wars content. And I look forward to seeing you again soon with another video. Bye.